All right, let's get over to Microsoft. Again, the stock a trading high here after its Q3 earnings were better than expected. You're looking at gains of just about 4%. The company beating on both the top and bottom lines. Also, cloud growth coming in better than what the street was bracing for. Overall sales here for Microsoft up about 7% to 52.9 billion. We want to bring in Rishi Jaloria, RBC Capital Markets, a software equity analyst. Rishi, it's good to see you. So your first impression of this report. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, look, I think this is better than everyone feared. Uh, you know, numbers definitely coming in a little bit stronger than, than what people are worried about, especially given all the headlines around the softening IT environment and, uh, uh, you know, recessions and, and obviously the banking crisis. So to see these sort of numbers where uh, Azure growth was actually in line uh, with guidance and not worse when I think, you know, investors I was talking to uh, were preparing for a miss on the Azure line, which is obviously the most important line in this one. Windows uh, OEM less bad than feared. Commercial bookings look pretty solid relative to their guidance. And I think putting this all together, it's showing us that enterprise software and cloud uh, and, and AI, right? And we can get to that in a second is definitely more resilient than people are fearing. And that's why this stock is up. And that's why you're seeing a lot of enterprise software trading up in the aftermarket right now. Yeah. Any sense of the movement in market share in terms of Azure? And, and what does that tell you about the macro environment that you're still seeing that type of growth in cloud? I think it's telling us two things, right? Um, number one, it's telling us that we are still early in the migration to the cloud. Uh, I know there were definitely worries about cloud saturation and hated COVID just pull forward all of the migration to the cloud. Uh, but you know, based on our checks, the answer to that is no, is that there's still a lot of low hanging fruit uh, left to migrate to the cloud. And uh, really just this, this game changing invention and innovation with generative AI is only going to be a forcing function uh, for the migration to the cloud. Second, I think it's showing us that Microsoft is very much the more enterprise focused player out of the big three hyperscale cloud vendors. And I think that's also showing up in the resilience of their numbers. Risha, let's talk AI. You mentioned it briefly there, certainly something that has really helped propel this stock since the start of the year. What are you looking for? What are you hoping to hear just in, on the analyst call that will help you give, uh, I guess, just more color just in terms of where things stand and in incorporating some of those features into their products? Uh, yeah, look, and, and I think they've, they've done all the right things in terms of announcing co-pilot and integration throughout Office and GitHub and, and, and Azure and everything and security. So I think that's all fantastic. What I'm looking for on the call is, is two things. Number one is what is early adoption and, and customer receptiveness been like? Because I think that's going to be a great leading indicator for how can this drive uh, usage over time. And then number two is I'm going to be looking for monetization vectors, whether that's direct, like something like GitHub Copilot, where you actually charge for it, or or you know, introducing an E7 SKU on Office 365, or whether that's just indirect. And, and all the announcements we see about other companies where they're having open AI GPT features throughout their product suite, what is that going to mean for Azure numbers? And can that lead to a reacceleration in Azure growth? We think very much the answer to that is yes. We actually think this open AI and generative AI opportunity is a call option on Microsoft stock. Rishi, you got a $285 price target. It, does anything in this report lead you to increase that? Not a ton of upside there. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll have to see, especially once uh, we get where guidance is going. Uh, but look, this is definitely better than what's in, in, in kind of my base case. I, I had assumed uh, Azure would continue decelerating and we'd see kind of a deceleration over the next couple quarters to the low 20s. If guidance comes in better than that and we're seeing less steep of a, of, of a troughing of Azure, um, you know, that that would kind of paint a picture in anyone's DCF model uh, of a number maybe a little bit higher than that price target. And, and again, I think once you start to layer in the benefits of generative AI, which is not in my price target, um, you know, you could be able to justify a bull case meaningfully beyond my base case. Rishi, give us a sense of how you think Microsoft is positioned because we certainly have this cooling PC sales market right now. Although when you take a look at the PC revenue number coming in better than what the street was bracing for, are they in a position of maybe strength that we weren't in initially giving them credit for? Yeah, I would say on the PC side, we, you know, that's going to continue to be weak in, in, in a post-COVID world and, and you start to layer on the, the tech layoffs and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just think it's showing that, again, enterprise focus, 
uh, more resilient than I think people are fearing. But but numbers are still down, right? Your Windows OEM still down, PC still down, um, and I think we're going to see that continue. Uh, you know, the the focus is increasingly going to be on uh, Azure. It's going to be on Office 365. It's going to be on the AI side of the equation, and then maybe even gaming, right? With the news this morning that that uh, Microsoft might be able to actually pull off the Activision deal. I think that'll again become a focal point for Microsoft investors. That's exactly where we wanted to end this. Do you buy that report from the New York Post that they are moving forward? despite the pushback from the FTC and what does that mean to the stock? Yeah, I, I do in fact believe that. I, you know, I, I don't have any you know inside sources or anything like that. But we've maintained throughout this process that Microsoft is going to be able to close the Activision uh, deal, probably with some guardrails around it. And, and you've seen them already introduce some to competitors around uh, deal exclusivity and the like. But we think the deal gets done. There's just not enough grounds to to oppose it or or, or stop it in our view. Um, we think this is going to be good for Microsoft stock. This puts them in a really poor position for gaming, and especially when we start to get a gaming recovery, you start to to layer in the benefits that you can get on Game Pass, which becomes a really a must own for any gamer. I think all of that is only going to be positive for Microsoft stock once the deal closes. We eagerly await comment from Lena Khan, who is eager to block just about everything these days. Rishi, good to see you, sir. Really appreciate the breakdown there.